All right, so let's have a look at how we receive money from our customer. So right now um, we are looking at our customers and if we just take a closer look at our domestic customer, we can see that they owe us 840 pounds at the moment. If we drill down into this one, we can see that those 840 pounds consists of two invoices. And both of these two invoices are unpaid, they are still open and uh, waiting for a payment. Um, you can also see if you just expand column here, uh, we can see in the remaining amount that they are still expecting the full amount to be paid or applied against them. So let's try, try to see how we receive money for, for the first one up here. We need to go to a journal called Cash Receipt Journals. So if we write something like this in the search bar, we'll see the Cash Receipt Journals. So you click that and you'll get to this window. Right now we just have a default Cash Receipt Journal. So we'll click this one. And the situation is that they have uh, paid us um, on our bank account. We have observed, observed that they have paid the full amount for this particular invoice and we want to update a uh, NAV to reflect this particular payment. So the way to do this, the way to do this is to create one line which reflects this payment and it's somewhat similar to when we paid or uh, paid our uh, vendor before um, it's just the reverse so in document type we're going to choose payment um, some might argue that there should have been an option called receipt but um, the term payment applies to both when you receive and pay money in NAV so we choose payment and then uh, document number can really be anything. We can get back to how you can use this document number for controlling purposes. In the account type, we need to choose customer. Again, as just a note, which is that there are many, many different ways you can use these cash receipt journals. Sometimes you wanna, you've received money from for multiple uh, invoices. Sometimes you've only received uh, partial payments. Um, sometimes you want to group payments in, 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 in different ways um, but this is again one of the most simplest uh, ways to to receive money from a customer just to get you started and get the the basics um, um, practiced so we will choose our customer here next we'll choose in the account number we'll drill down here and we'll select oops we'll select our customer and we'll tap out of that one and then again we go to these applies to uh, columns over here and the first one we will select is the applies to document type and we want to indicate that this payment is going to be applied against an invoice so we choose invoice and in the applies to document number we drill down and we'll see our two um, our two invoices, our two unpaid invoices and due to the information in our in our online bank we will realize or we will know that the customer paid the first one so we'll highlight it, it's, it's actually already highlighted um, or selected so we'll choose this one and then click OK and then NAV, firstly it uh, indicates which this is the number of the invoice we just chose and it has also filled in the amount. So the last thing we need to do is to indicate that we want to, um, or w that we have received these money into our bank account and not, uh, in, not in physical cash or into, into some other bank account. So we'll choose, instead of GL account here, we'll choose bank account, and then we'll select our bank account number here. As we only have one bank account, there's not so much to choose from. And then we will post this payment. Okay. 
just another note before we go and have a look at uh, at uh, the result. Um, obviously, sometimes you want to receive um, you want to receive money from your customer during a bank reconciliation, and there's a separate tool for handling those kinds of uh, uh, receipts. Um, so that that doesn't belong to this video. So if we go and have a look at the result or the outcome of this particular payment. We can start by having a look at our customer card. So domestic customer, what has happened here? Well, we can see that right now our customer owes us 600. So let's try to drill into that those 600 and, and see how those are made up. We can see that the reason they owe us 600 is because they now only owe us from for the remaining uh, invoice. But as was the case with uh, the vendor payments or the purchase payments, um, the reason that we are only seeing one line here is because NAV has automatically sets a filter so that we only see the, the open ones or the outstanding ones or the relevant ones for, for the processes we have to do. So we can remove this filter uh, where it says open yes to reveal both the invoice and the payment that we just did. So we'll remove it and now we see both the original invoice here for those 240 pounds we also see the unpaid invoice as we which we just saw before as well but we and we also see the payment with, that we just did so we can also see that <clears throat> the remaining amount in uh, in this invoice has now dropped to zero which means that it's uh, it's nav has chosen to close it so we can see in the open column here that there's no longer a check mark in the open uh, check mark box. And if we choose this uh, payment and click um, applied interest, this one, we should see a reference to the uh, invoice which has which this payment closed. And we all know that the, it's this one because we just saw it. But um, if you have a long list of entries here, it uh, and maybe sometimes you have multiple, um, you can pay, you can have multiple invoices against uh, one payment, or you can have one payment, um, multiple payments against one against one invoice. So if you if you click or highlight this one and click applied entries, we should expect to see this invoice um, here. Invoice of 240 and entry number 10. So if we scroll outwards here, we should see that, that this top line has entry number 10. And of course, the reverse is, is, is the case as well. So the invoice is referring to the payment. And as you just mentioned, you can have multiple lines here. If, you have, if this invoice has been paid by multiple um, partial payments, then if you were to click this line and click Applied Entries, you would see all of those um, partial payments going downwards here. Another thing we can have a look at is our bank account. So let's close down our vendor here and go to our bank account. So our HSBC, double click that one. And we'll have a look at our balance. So before, when we, when we just paid our our purchase invoice, our vendor, our balance on our bank account dropped to 120 minus here. But as we just received some money from our customer, 240 to be exact, our balance has now increased into the positives of 120. Finally, we can go and have a look at uh, the GL entries. So there are a few ways to go to get to that point. So let's just um, see if we can get to that, uh, the, get to the GL entries from our bank ledger entry. So if we click navigate here, it's just thinking, and then we see our GL entries here. So we click those ones. And we should see something similar as when we did the purchase, just the opposite way. So this 1010 is our bank account and it has been debited with 240. So it's been in increased. And um, our, our vendor or our customer 
uh, accounts receivables has been also well decreased. We uh, we are no longer owed those money. 